the next uh, transformation, so to say, right, is what we would call parallelism. I'm going to sort of look into this by taking up a specific example, right? And the example that I'm going to take is just going to be a simple three tap FIR filter, right? Y of n is equal to A x of n plus B x of n minus one plus C x of n minus two. What would the architecture for this look like? I would basically have a tap delay line, right? So these three registers over here, multiply them by the corresponding coefficients, add up, right? And I get Y of n as the output. Now the critical path over here is going to be given by Tm, that is one multiplier, followed by two adders. Okay, this is, I mean, we have done this analysis once earlier as well. Now, what I'm going to do is to rewrite that equation for the FIR filter in two steps, so to say. I mean, it's not exactly two steps, it's pretty much a duplication of the equation. But what I'm saying is I'll separate out the even values and the odd values in this way, right? So I'm effectively going to create two output sequences, right? And I'm writing down the equation for the y of 2n, that is the even valued y, as a, you know, I'm literally just replacing n with 2n, okay, which means that wherever that was n, I have 2n, wherever I had n minus 1, I have 2n minus 1, not 2n minus 2, right? So it's not 2 into n minus 1. It's literally just take the label n and replace it with the label 2n. Okay. So now if, uh, what I have is, I have these equations which basically tell me that I could potentially be thinking about computing the odd and even values in, you know, sort of separate pieces of hardware, so to say. What would the architecture for something like this look like? The first thing that I would need to do is to now take the x of n itself and break it up into an odd and even stream once again. Right. So once again, I have the x of 2n. So this is the even values and this x of 2n plus 1 are the odd values. Okay. Now, what's the purpose of this? The way that I can look at it is, you know, the x of 0, x of 2, x of 4, the even values are going to come on x of 2n, x of 1, x of 3, x of 5 are going to come on the lower branch. Right. Which means that if I put one delay element, Right, or one register, one physical register on the upper branch, the output that it's going to create is going to be x of 2n minus 2. Right? Think about it because effectively what I'm saying is that the sequence on the upper uh, branch is x of 0, x of 2, x of 4. Right? So the next sample after x of 0 that comes on the upper stream is going to be x of 2. The next sample after that is going to be x of 4. Right? Which is why I'm saying that if I put one register and delay it by one sample, what I'll get is x of 2n minus 2. Okay. And you would probably also have noticed that this register then effectively, if I'm you know using a physical register with a direct clock uh, attached to it, that clock would basically be running at twice the time period or half the frequency of the input clock. Okay. We'll look at that again later. The important point is putting one delay on this one sample delay effectively goes from x of 2n to x of 2n minus 2. What about the lower branch? I go from x of 2n plus 1 to x of 2n plus 1 minus 2, that is x of 2n minus 1. Okay. Now, if you look closely at this, what you will see is that all the terms that were there in the two equations that are required for y of 2n and y of 2n plus 1 are already present. I have generated them in some way right and now all that i need to do is combine them together okay and what i have shown is that you know i basically multiply the x of 2n minus uh, 2n into a uh, 2n minus 1 into b and 2n minus 2 into c and add them up okay the order in which i add them etc does not really matter right and finally what i get is y of 2n as an output and if you look at this, you will notice that, you know, once again, if I try to do a critical path analysis, this is once again Tm plus 2 Ta, right? And so is this, right? The tricky thing, of course, over here is this register from which it is starting is now at this sort of slowed down speed, 
and the question is where is it going to end right fine i have started out from a register so you know it's a, fine, a regular piece of synchronous circuitry but just like i had this kind of a switch over here right switch or demultiplexer i need some kind of a multiplexer on the other side right which means that finally those two paths that i have shown over there in marked in red tm plus 2 ta are going to probably end up at some kind of a multiplexer but the point is and so in other words this the moment i have these switches what i am actually creating is some kind of a time variant system okay so this is actually an example of a time variant system What do I mean by that? It means that if depending on which is the exact instant of time at which I look at the system, depending on whether it was an odd or an even clock sample, the behavior will be different. Okay, that was exactly what we were assuming is not the case for all our retiming and so on. Okay, now without going into too much detail, I'm going to sort of just sort of leave it at uh, one thing by saying that. the reason why at least the techniques that we are working about uh, talking about work over here two things one is we are applying all our retiming etc only inside this domain that is after i have done this changing from t to 2t this time variant system and the second is this further has one property that it is something called periodic time variance right that periodic time variance basically means that even though the behavior changes from one instant to another it follows a regular periodic pattern which we can analyze properly and make use of if necessary okay some of the slightly more advanced uses of retiming actually need to make use of that they need to sort of say okay can i take a particular register through some kind of a multiplexer or demultiplexer like this similar kinds of analysis holds but you will need to do that more carefully such a case but as far as we are concerned the important point is i can implement the filter this way i have now drawn the rest of the thing that is you know the lower branch as well the part that is required for getting y of 2n plus 1 okay so i have got y of 2n i have got y of 2n plus 1 i combine them by putting a multiplexer right so this was what i said earlier the sort of opposite of what's there on the left the multiplexer basically takes in two streams and periodically interleaves them together right which means that finally what i end up with is y of n okay all the samples and what we can see further is that if the time period between samples is t for x of n eventually what i'll find is that the time period between samples is the same t for y of n but in between this the multiplexer and demultiplexer what i end up with is i can actually operate with a time period of 2t right in other words a slower behavior okay so what that is telling me is that how did i obtain this entire parallel execution i used the equations that i had for the filter right and thereby was able to precisely say okay these are the things that need to get connected together and this is how you do the connection and thereby i can run the entire thing at a slower speed internally right if you are trying to directly implement something using digital logic this is probably the best way to go about it it gives you a direct circuit level implementation almost of parallelism 